I'm here today with Pippa Ganditum, um, the Sustainability um, Product Director for ATPI Halo. Um, it's wonderful to have you here. Um, you're obviously joining us at the Major Events um, Hosts and Federation Summit in Lausanne this June. Um, you'll be taking part in the interactive workshop um, around the role of sustainability in major events. Um, that will be sponsored by Florism Montreal. But first, Pippa, I mean, the people listening and people tend to probably love to know a little bit more about yourselves. What has led you to where you are today? Because as I understand it, you were at British Airways for about, uh, from 1990 to 2006, before joining ATPI and then you had a variety of roles. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's, been, it's been quite a journey, actually. Probably, probably not a journey that one would have... Uh, been able to predict um, where it would lead but I guess that's that's the great thing about career opportunities isn't it that we sometimes end up somewhere somewhere different um, so yes my my travel career started 15 years um, started with British Airways and I was with them for 15 years um, I started working with them in Austria um, which was a great place to learn really very holistically because of small organization um growing and so you got involved in client facing internal planning the whole thing so it's great um and then through british airways i ended up back in london working at british airways head office in waterside and managing global markets specifically the specialist markets like shipping and energy um and missionary travel things like that so that led me into um, the, the travel management side of, of things um, and existing clients of ours in Stone International as they were then, but has now become part of ATPI, um, who were shipping and energy specialists, um, offered me a role at the time when there were a lot of changes going on um, post the Gulf, second Gulf War, et cetera, with British Airways. So, I joined ATPI, um, and that itself is now also 18 years ago. <laughs> so um, the industry is, is, has seen me in it uh, for some time. So when I started with, um, with ATPI, um, those were always commercial client-facing roles. So I've always had that, that focus really on, on client-facing. Um, my, my last role prior to the ATPI Halo directorship was director of global account management strategy at ATPI. Um, and that was really, again, driving consistency around uh, how we manage our clients and service and look after them at a global level. Um, our business is global. A lot of our clients are multinational and global. So that focus is really, really important for consistency. Um, and the, the ATPI Halo role, um, came about during the pandemic, really, we, as ATPI had started um, pre-pandemic uh, to think about sustainability right at the very highest level. Our CEO is very passionate about sustainability mm -hmm. and specifically around the environmental sustainability piece. We wanted uh, to have a solution available um, when we came out of uh, the COVID era, knowing that travel would be somewhat different um, and also that sustainability was growing as a, as a topic in people's, not just in their minds, but, but on their, on their um, planning and, and even on their spreadsheets. So we established an ESG steering group within ATPI. I became a part of that. Um, and I think it was probably as a result of all the questions I was asking in terms of what are we doing with, you know, with our existing clients and we need their input and how are we going to to move forward with them so that we can um, engage with them on this uh, important topic. Um, out of that came the ATPI Halo role, I guess. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it, it's, been, it's been a great journey, I have to say. Um, I've always been passionate about sustainability and that probably goes back to childhood. Um, always loved the outdoors and activities outdoors. Um, many, holidays through family ties um, in the Alps um, and other places, thank goodness, around the world, because my father was in the aviation industry, not sustainable, but helped us travel and see the world. Um, 
and uh, I think as a result of that, I you know I realised and I could see places that I was returning to year after year. When you think ten years ago, twenty years ago, changes were evident. So the glaciers were receding, um, the pine trees um, have more needles at the top than at the bottom, and things like that. So yeah, the, the, the simply noticeable changes when you sit down and reflect. So I've always been passionate about that. And in the years that I lived in Austria, because I lived there also for some years, um, I think also underpin some of that, that interest because um, society there is, is probably a little bit further ahead in some areas on, on the recycling and general awareness of the importance of, of environmental sustainability. Like you say, you've had loads of roles um, of, among sustainability through the aviation industry right through to where you are now. What have become the biggest challenges, not just today, but over the course of your career around sustainability and around travel sustainability as well? But I think, I think probably the biggest challenge that um, we face as a travel management and events uh, management provider is that many clients um, haven't really understood that sustainability comes at a price um, and especially when we began the conversation about two years ago um, there were companies of course and clients that, that already had factored things in because they wanted to be ahead of the curve but the majority of clients haven't factored in that sustainability and, and, and traveling sustainably um, would potentially have a price attached. Now, whether that's simply by making the more sustainable choices that you travel more directly than indirectly, direct flight will be less emissions than multiple flights indirect to reach your destination, um, that's more sustainable um, and a higher cost in most cases. Um, and also right through to the offsetting of, of carbon, um, sorry, offsetting of the carbon footprint that also has a price. Um, having said that, of course, clients are also looking at reducing their overall footprint. So the re I think, again, post-COVID, people were far more aware of travelling for the sake, you know, travelling for a reason rather than just for the sake of travelling. So some clients... Uh, let's say on average may have reduced some travel uh, by cutting out unnecessary travel. However, there has been a huge upsurge in travel because there are a lot of meetings and events and various things that just didn't play, take place for two years. And so that's, you know, they're, 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 there's all of that happening as well. I think also for certain sectors, um, some sectors that we, we have clients in are feeling the pinch. So they're in a bit of a moral dilemma. So you go for the more sustainable choice that might be more expensive because it's a direct flight, or do you go for the less sustainable choice but the but the most affordable um, option? Um, and you know that that that's the dilemma that we face and our clients face. And often it's obviously going to be the the um, the financial spreadsheet that wins the argument um, on that. That is beginning to change. Fortunately, we do see some clients that now actually have a policy whereby they choose their flight based on, or their options based on carbon emissions. So the most carbon efficient um, option is the one that they're encouraged to choose. So that's good. But yeah. I would say that is absolutely the, the minority at the moment. Um, I also think that in terms of other challenges, I think that I think just the whole area of environmental sustainability, there's a lot of jargon. We talk about carbon neutrality and net zero. Um, I did a, a piece at the business travel um, at the BTN uh, show last year where I did a whole, a whole session on jargon busting. Because again, we have travel managers that we work with on the, on the corporate travel and the event side that are suddenly expected to understand about environmental sustainability when they're talking travel in their travel program but they don't necessarily understand the jargon and they haven't been given an opportunity to understand that so just the basic understanding of those things is, is important as well and we we do what we can to help our our clients and, and contacts um but of course it, it requires a little bit more than just a sitting in on a one-hour session somewhere 
Really and I think nice. along with that understanding is also within our own organisation um, and, and similar organisations, as people understand more, they're better able to articulate what it is we're talking about. And so, again, it's, it's helping, helping our own people internally as well to understand we've got a new, we've got a new service um, and, and how to sell that and what that means to clients and beyond clients, what that means to auditors and investors and all the rest who are interested in what um, the, the, the business um, that they're looking after is doing for sustainability. Okay, well, that sounds very interesting. Hopefully you'll be able to cover some of that in your workshop um, at the Olympic Museum with us in Lausanne um, this June, um, 12th to the 15th. Um, so speaking of the summit itself, um, what are you hoping to get out of the summit? Um, what are you looking forward to about the um, summit in Switzerland this year? I mean, these summits are always, they're always great for networking. Um, they're always uh, a good degree of familiar faces and a lot of new faces as well. Um, so it's a great opportunity for everybody to get together. Um, and I think it's that networking and the coming together of, of people is so important because every and every different client of ours so that means the same every different uh, organization attending the MEI and the summit they'll be somewhere along that that sustainability path and it won't not everybody's path is going to be the same with by far not all at the same stage so if we can help each other to understand more I'm learning still every day <laughs> Um, I'm able to share some of some of my learnings with with others, and I think that's that's the whole thing. You know, if we can all share, uh, learn something, and share something, then that's a fantastic outcome. Um, but I really do think that those of us who who have experience already um, in managing strategies around sustain, sustainability and and having some some successful outcomes. Um, I have an obligation to to share some of that knowledge and experience uh, with others in the room who may be just starting out on that journey. Yeah, and I'm sure they'll be very, very excited to hear what you have to say. And obviously, it's going to resonate with them and see how they can implement it into their own events, um, venues, or in their own businesses. Um, so it'll be very, very interesting. But thank you very much, Pippa, for joining us today. Thank you for giving up your time to um, talk to us, to get a bit of an insight into yourself and what you're looking forward to this year in um, Switzerland. Thank you very much. Thank you, Josh.